So welcome to the Data Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafery. We run a session here every Friday um, to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about data vaults, all kinds of, um, yeah, around data vault, data-driven technologies or data-driven applications, um, cloud technologies, and so on. And uh, you can use the chat here if you want to like, if you would like to ask a, a live question, you can use the Q&A in this client. Um, you can raise your hand if you want to get voice. There's also a form I'll show you um, after today's session where you can submit your questions, essentially. And if you receive multiple questions, I will cherry pick and then um, uh, pick one, yeah, depending on my mood or a large strategy, uh, pick up the, the right question for today's session. And it's time box, so typically a good uh, YouTube video. And if there's no questions at all, I talk, we'll talk about the cluster here. But at the moment, we have enough, question, enough questions. But uh, keep asking, right? So uh, we're in the summer low at the moment. So I'm not running dry yet, but uh, it's getting closer. All right. Um, let me share my screen here. One second. So this question is about um, um, essentially about hierarchical links. So we have an example in the in the bootcamp training how a hierarchical link is looks like how it's being used. But this uh, consultant here would like to know a bit more of, uh, essentially background or another example essentially um, how a, a hierarchical link, link looks like. So I prepared the whiteboard. Let me do this. Um, I draw here. Should work out. Perfect. Okay. So let's think. Let's think. We let's do it. Like, okay. Let's try. Okay. In the training, we have a hierarchical link for a bill of materials. That's what um, uh, it's, it's essentially mentioned here. The bill of materials, that's one option. The other important option is an, it's a organization hierarchy. Uh, let's make it, let's talk about a simple one where you just have employees reporting to their managers and not a mixed hierarchy, which is a bit more complicated. Well, just a little bit different, but we have to add a bit more. A mixed hierarchy where you have both employees in the, in the hierarchy, but also organization and units in the hierarchy. So we, we keep it simple. We have just managers and employees. So from a... From a data perspective, the first step is to have a, um, a hub that captures all the employee IDs. So we end up with a hub here. Uh, with roughly two columns, you know, there's a bit more. Um, I have the hash key and the load, uh, the load date. The business key. But there's also the load date TS and the record source, right? record source, whatever, RC. Um, those columns I don't show because for, it's not relevant for discussion here today. So business key, that's the employee IDs, E minus one, E minus two, E minus three, that's a two, E minus four and so on. And we have the hash keys, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Okay, so let's see. That's the hub for the business case. We just collect them, just like in the example in the um, in the um, bootcamp. In the end, those business keys we just ingest for coming from a source where you have master data about your employees or your product and so on. You end up with having these hubs anyway, right? So uh, they're not part of the design of the hierarchical link. The hierarchical link is going to use those existing hubs that you have in the role in the vault or in the business vault, and is implementing the hierarchy around on top essentially. Now. So we have a hub employee with some satellites attached to it, um, with with some descriptions. Who's the, what's the first name, last name um, of this employee ID in that sense, or of the employee? And then we want to capture a hierarchical link. Now, either your source provides you the hierarchy, let's say there's a parent-child hierarchy in your source data set, or you calculate one in the business world somehow based on some raw data, maybe some some um, relationships, some source data you would calculate a parent-child hierarchy. Both ways works. What I do, what I like to do is, in the raw data vault, I stick to the source data set. We have an expectation for what a what a hierarchical link looks like. We'll talk about that. But in the raw data vault, I stick to the source system. So if they deliver me a parent-child hierarchy, which is not complete yet, where I might would say, well, for performance reasons or for the dashboard, I need something more. So be it. In the raw data vault, we capture the data as it arrives. As, as it arrives, if they deliver us multiple tables, let's say uh, one for 
the employee, one for the managers or something. So be it. In this case, I create one um, table for uh, the lower levels, one table per level essentially, and um, that's what, what's getting delivered at least. And then in the raw data vault, I'm creating one hub per level and I'm linking it, right? Because that's how the source data set looks like. But for our dashboard tool or for our business logic to make to implement efficient business logic, we want to have a, um, a hierarchical link now. And the design of the hierarchical link is it has, as any other link, two hub references. Well, it has two hub references and the rest of the structure, like the hash key of the link, the loaded the record source. I'm omitting that one as well, right? So maybe I should keep some space. So that's the, this is live guys. Okay, H link org. So I'm omitting again um, the hash key of the link, the load date timestamp and the record SR record source. So, um, so the hierarchical link has two columns, one for a child, one for parents. That's how we call it in the book. In the training, we call it from and to. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, you could name it differently. You could also say, well, this is the HK employee and the HK manager or child to parent, whatever you want to name it. I like readable names, so that's what I would prefer here, from employee to manager. And then you essentially indicate that one is the boss. So let's say employee two. Yeah, let's say employee two is the boss. So he gets the root node that says hash key two, three, to hash key two, three. The, the, in a root node, the parent is equal to the child. Or in this case, the manager is equal to the employee. That indicates the root node. And then you essentially indicate that, let's say one, two reports to manager two, three. And one, two is a manager to the other guy. So three, four. Or five are the men are the employees to manager one two. That's your hierarchy. Now the cool thing is, just like in um, yeah yeah, just like in the example in the training where we someone's explained it, um, you you can have multiple hierarchies in this in the same link for the bill of materials it makes sense because you have multiple products you want to build, so you need one bill of material per product and sometimes per revision. Um, same game here. So you could have different hierarchies. One is the, let's say, the hierarchy for the organization. And one is the hierarchy for, let's say, trainings or for um, for the sports club, um, where they do the sports, the, the um, organizational sports, the company sports, right? So in this case, in the company sports example, um, the manager to, with the hash key 23, employee number two, isn't the, the captain of the team, right? The, for the soccer team or something. The captain of the soccer team is, is the employee with E minus four. So he becomes the root node in this scenario. Uh, four, five, four, five. And the only two, the, let's say the other two guys who play soccer with him or her is uh, two, three and three, four, both report to four, five. Now, to capture this in a, in a, in a, in a standard link, we have to extend it somehow because the, a standard link wouldn't be able to capture this because the hash keys um, for the link would be the same, right? So we extend it to capture this kind of data. Yeah, well, there's a risk that there's duplicates and maybe not in this case, but if you have a scenario where let's say one, two also is part of the soccer team, one, two, two, three, then you got the duplicate here and here. That's a problem. And this might be valid in your data set here. So if for this case to indicate different um, different um, relationships, you either can refer to a product that you're building because you have one bill of materials per product. So I would just add the hub reference to the product to a link, to be honest. Or you create a weak hub reference, like a code. So this one is, um, for example, the hierarchy for the org. And this one is the hierarchy for the soccer team. That would that's what uh, yeah that's, that's the weak hub reference essentially. So that's how the look the link looks like. Again, if you want to have 
um, multiple bill of materials would add the hub link, uh, hub product for, for it essentially to capture multiple bill of materials with overlapping, and that's the problem here, with overlapping um, relationships in these hierarchies. And then, because also in the bill of material, products will be reused by different hierarchies, right? Um, all right, and then in a, in a, in a um, organization hierarchy, you also want to have satellites. First of all, there are satellites attached to the employee, right? Because there will be satellites describing the employee, uh, first name, last name, and so on. But then there's also most probably a at least one satellite on the organization hierarchy. And that's the effectivity satellite from when to when an employee reported to a manager. And there's a lot of misconception of the effectivity satellite. Um, a lot of people think it's complicated, but it's not. It's actually a standard satellite. Model-wise, there's nothing behind it. It's just a standard satellite. We don't apply any driving keys. We don't apply the timelines there. We just capture the timelines, okay? So and with, having said that, a FED satellite is just based on a satellite split. That's it. We just separate the business timelines into their own satellites, or in this case, use the satellite to capture those timelines. Now, the source system provides us from when to when a, a, an employee report to a manager. So we have the, the FED satellite in a role data vault. In some other cases, you might have to compute them or to crack these timelines. What if the employee started reporting after the end date of the relationship? Makes no sense, but it's what, that's the data you get from the source. They switch the timers most probably or mess up the data somehow. I mean, what could go wrong, right? And in the raw data vault, in the effectivity set, like we capture the data as is, as it's being delivered from the source, all the dirty data. And then in the business vault, we clean those timelines and make a business decision. How do we deal with the fact that the relationship end date is before the start date? So be it either um, set them equal, switch them. I don't know, right? So I, I don't know. This is it's all business logic. So we have an FQ satellite. Let's assume we get clean data from the source. Good luck. And um, we have the structure is the hash key from the link, from the parent. The FQ the satellite is attached to the link structure, right? So we have the hash key from the link, the load date timestamp. We have the, let's say called valid from date, valid to date, and the record source, which I'm omitting here again. So I'm adding it here. So it's somewhere, right? None of the column. All right. And I keep it open if I forgot something. Um, all right. So for every link, I need to know when this relationship was valid. Uh, now I need my column for the hash keys. Okay, sorry for that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not a sequence. Oh, yeah, okay, come on. Eins, eins, one. So no, it's not a sequence. And yeah, damn. Okay, it's an A. <laughs> okay, so that, that makes it clear it's not a sequence, it's a hash key. It's A1, A2, and so on. Um, and for every link, I'm indicating now the load date of the record essentially. So for A1, let's go through it one time. Let's assume there's a change. So the first set of records, I'm only capturing the this part of the data here now, the organization timeline. The other timeline or the other hierarchy, I'm just ignoring it for the sake of the effective satellite. So A1, A2, A3, A4 came in on day one altogether. And valid from is, that is the relationship from the inception of the company. So we talk about valid from day one until end of all times. I would not use null for this. I'm using 99, D99. The company will expire in 99 days, essentially. Okay. Good. That's the first load. And then there's a change. Let's say that um, so far, the, user, the, the employee with the hash key 45, this one here, reports to the uh, manager with the hash key one, two. Now, this person gets promoted and no reports to the CEO directly, okay? We don't create, we don't change the records in the link. We don't end date them, they just exist. So the link doesn't care, for example, what is the current relationship, just like the hub. The hub doesn't care which employee still exists. So if you delete a employee in the source system, the hub will still collect these business keys 
because in your satellites you have all this historical data and if you delete a hub entry you're losing um i mean the setup would describe some hash key that doesn't exist anymore and some business key um that's why we'd never delete data from hubs and links except when the lawyer is asking us hey because of gdpr or something we have to do something that's another topic how we deal with this but here in this scenario we don't delete anything so uh, there's a change the old relationship isn't true anymore so the hash key 40 the employee with the hash key 45 doesn't report to one uh, the manager one two anymore but to two three so for the link it means we just add another link link entry so we get a nine for the org hierarchy and then um, 45 is reporting now to 23. That's for the org hierarchy. That's a new link entry. So we have to add a new delta to the satellite. That is true. And this happens, let's say, on date number three. So for A9, I'm adding a new description for the new parent. Uh, load date is day nine. Day three, I said. And the, the this, this work will start, let's say, on day five. So on day three, HR has locked into the HR system that this employee um, with the hash key 45 will report for manager 23, but only starting on day five, right? So on day three, we get an information on the business timeline for day five. That's the point. And this will be the relationship until the end of the uh, of corporation ends. In 99 days. Um, however, we also know the, the well, the source system delivers it to us that for this particular employee, for the relationship with the hash key A4, this one here, for this relationship, we know that it will come to an end on day five. And we know that also on day three. That's when the data gets delivered. So the effectivity satellite will capture now for the relationship A4 on day three, that's the load date. It, the original relationship started on day one. This fact didn't change. So day one, but we know it will come to an end on day five. Um, right. So the cool thing is, if you know, if let's say day five comes, the employee works now for the, um, for the manager, realizes the boss is not a, good, a nice guy, um, he never experienced, or she or her, he or her never experienced that um, because uh, let's say manager one, two was uh, essentially um, um, hiding all the bad stuff from management. So um, the employee number four with the hash key 45 wants to go back to the old manager again. So in this case, no problem at all. The and that's that's happens let's say on day five but hr tells you well yeah we can do this something here um but this will happen only on day 10 let's say so on day five hr logs in an update this this employee will report to another manager there was there's no impact on the link itself because we know the relationship already the the old relationship right it's now so there will be no change no no additional link entry and then which means that for the old relationship, A9, on day five, that's when the employee complains, right? We know this relationship started on day five. That's this one here, right? We know it started on day five, but will come to an end on day 10. Because that's when the employee goes back to the old manager and starts reporting there again. And then we also know on day five, that the, re the old relationship, which ended on day five, will be reactivated. And that means, but on day five, oh, sorry, on day 10. We know on day five, correct, that on day 10, the employee will work again for the old manager. And that will be the current relationship on the business timeline. So that's, and then you could also argue, well, then the employee realizes, well, this is complete nonsense here. I'm quitting, right? So in this case, there's another uh, uh, satellite entry. Again, no link entry because we know all the relationships, but a new, new satellite entry where I should have. One second. What did I do?
Ah, oh, come on. Okay, sorry. So um, there's a new satellite entry coming in, and that's essentially end dating the link with the hash key A4. A9 is going to end date on day 10 anyway, but on day, um, good example, I need two rows here anyway. Now I have to scribble a little bit. So on, um, so below this line, everything above the line is the link. And everything below the line is the extension to the satellite. Sorry for that. So the, the employee decides on day, while waiting for the new um, management uh, relationship, on day six decides that this is nonsense, right? So we're leaving. So we get new two, two, two new link entries because we know for a fact that the relationship A9 will not end on day 10. The employee decides to leave on day six and they have a, a probation period so they can leave more or less any time the next business day, day seven, that's when they leave. So A9, day six, that's when the data comes in. The, employee, the relationship, the current relationship business-wise is still the hash key A9, which means that um, on... This so this starts on day five, but will come to an end on day seven. And the other relationship, a four on day six, that was about to start on day 10. That I leave that fact, but it will never come into effect day seven. So that's actually before the um, start date. And that's how I know based on this data and based on the business logic downstream that this relationship never started. That depends on how you model this, right? So in some cases, you would set the day, day, uh, day 10 back to null or something to indicate that. That depends, essentially. But it's a business time. So it's uh, you can interpret it the way you want. So I can also define it the way I want, right? So yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea of the hierarchical link, how we model organizational hierarchies. And maybe we, we change the title here to of the slide deck to organizational hierarchies, actually. Um, but that's the idea. Sorry for the space constraints here. I was struggling a bit. Those two rows here don't belong to the link. They are part of the satellite, right? Um, they don't belong to the link up there. Sorry for that. Um, but that's how it, how it works. So um, the, hierarchy, the organization hierarchy is really done by three entities, by the hub employee, by the hierarchical link for the organizational um, hierarchy, and a satellite indicating from when to when these uh, records are valid. If you want to find out what is the current hierarchical organizational hierarchy, what you do is you essentially select from the from the hierarchical link, but join the FQ satellite on the highest load date records. I mean, typically you have a window function on top where you also have a virtual load end date, um, or have a pit table involved where the pit table is attached to the link, and that way you can find out quickly what is the latest description for every link entry. So for every link entry here in the hierarchical link, I have one satellite delta describing the, the link. And then I can use the business timelines to find out what is currently valid or what should be currently valid according to business timelines. That's how it works. And then I can start essentially filter down the records where, because I'm only interested in, for the current hierarchy, I'm only interested in those records where the end date, the, the valid to date, is end of all times. The other ones I know are end dated. So they are at least for the for the current data, they are not uh, relevant anymore, right? So I can filter them out quickly, essentially. That's the basic idea. And that's how I get the current hierarchy or the hierarchy from yesterday, the day before, for every day, essentially. That's a cool thing. All right, that's the that's essentially another example for hierarchical links, the organization hierarchy, how we, how we model it, how we capture it. Um, yeah, if you have a question like this, um, let me clean this up first. Let me save this. Okay, clear. All right. If you have a question like this. Oops, sorry. Oh, there you go. So if you have a question like this, use the form here, sfr.ee slash Friday, where you can submit questions, um, where uh, people submit questions all the time, which is nice. The larger the group gets, the more questions we get.
And ch also check out scale3.2 slash webinars where we have a webinar for DBT at the moment and for Wearscape. More webinars to come. Um, they're, they're month on a monthly basis. The date of Friday, I mean, think about the title is on a weekly basis every Friday. Um, the Data Dreamer is coming up. That's our conference that we organize in Hanover. It's all about cost efficient data solutions. So it's all about saving costs. I mean, there's a recession coming up in, in Germany, at least at the moment. So good timing for this title of conference. Um, that's on October 10 and 11. So if you have a chance to come over to Hanover, Germany, try to make your way. Um, good, time, good chance to shake hands, essentially. Not just virtually, right? And uh, we also joined the Data World Innovators um, uh, community. That's essentially a forum where we also have webinars. Uh, there's some Q&A, live Q&A sessions um, with the community over there, similar to this format here a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, check it out. I mean, there's some recordings of those sessions as well already. Um, yeah, we're moving or we're copying also the um, the videos here from the day of Friday over to the community as well. So check out the, on sign up. Uh, it's, it's free, right? So sign up for the community. Check it out. Um, we have essentially found uh, founding members if you want. So we are um, trying to push the, the audience there as well. Cool. Thanks for joining. Have a wonderful weekend and see you next Friday, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on, on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.